أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمصطفى من المرسلين سيدنا ومولانا وحبيبنا وعزيزنا محمد وعلى آله ومعيته الصالحين <coughs> Dear brothers, dear sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I should say at the beginning here a Eid Fitr Mubarak to you and yours May Allah bring the next Ramadan around when we have inched at least inched closer to being satisfactory subjects of His on our way to becoming Allah's choice subjects. Ibad Allah وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هونا وإذا خاطبهم الجاهلون قالوا سلاما And I pray and I hope Eid al-Fitr this year will be surpassed by many accomplishments and many steps forward by the committed Muslims throughout the world in the year to come. Next Eid, inshaAllah, we will see more progress and more success with Allah's leave. <clears throat> now, in the past, I don't know, it must have been about five or six weeks, maybe a little more, we were um, concentrating on the ayat in Surat Al-Isra, Surat Bani Israel. The first several ayat in that surah uh, guide us through the character of Bani Israel historically as well as their behavior in our nowadays affairs. Uh, it also explain these ayat explain to us the um, the checks that are placed on Bani Israel in the past by Ibadan Lana, the words in the ayah, and the same Ibadan Lana as they will come into being as the years drift by. Uh, this week, because for those maybe who have not been following, um, we in in the last few months we took a parallel course on one on one side we are concentrating on the ayat of bani israel and we began like that a couple of years ago or so but recently in the last several months we also interjected another rail another parallel, and that is to speak about Bani Umayyah, Bani Israel and Bani Umayyah, Bani Israel and the havoc that they've caused inside the um, world of divine scriptures, at Torah, Al Injil, Al Quran, and the the other rail and parallel is Bani Umayyah, and that is, and we are trying to visit the ayat in the Quran, and the hadiths of the Prophet, and the events of almost 14 centuries ago, to expose the nature of Bani Umayyah, uh, the rulers of Bani Umayyah. 
Uh, because what is happening in today's world, if we cannot see that Bani Saud are a hybrid of Bani Israel and Bani Umayyah combined, we just don't understand where we are in the world of uh, self-determination. We just don't understand where we are. And this has been a, uh, a lapse in the presentation of the meanings of the Qur'an by those who are supposed to know better, by the scholars and the clergymen and the khutaba and the shuyukh, etc., etc. Uh, they've left a very wide gap here and yours truly is trying to, as much as possible, um, narrow that gap. <clears throat> there are ayat in the Qur'an that were revealed to speak to the enemies of Allah's Prophet. Let's take a step back as an introductory here, introductory note, uh, and say that the Prophet of Allah, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him and his, before the Islamic mission, before the Ba'tha and Nabawiya, al Ba'tha and Nabawiya, uh, had no enemies. We don't know, there's not one historical book or source that tells us that Muhammad ibn Abdullah, alayhi salatu wasalam, had enemies before his 40th year in life. That's when he received, he began receiving revelation from Allah Jalla wa'ala. But then Allah tasked him, so to speak, with communicating this message to his people and to humanity. This is not uh, an Israeli message. Uh, confined to Arabians or to a certain race or a certain people. This is the Quran and the Prophet are open books, are accessible to everyone, any time. So when he began, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him and those who are with him. When he began, he began to speak to people in friendly terms. He didn't speak to them as kafirs or as mushriks. Please, brothers and sisters, try to understand this point because it's very important uh, to undo the damage that has been done by the vassals of the British in Muslim countries who have twisted and who have maligned the meanings of the ayat, the meanings of key words in the ayat in the Qur'an in such a way that we had Muslims by the hundreds of thousands uh, believing that everyone else who is a Muslim is not a Muslim. And they're not polite about it. They say Muslims who don't fit into their frame of reference are kafirs. That's not how the Prophet communicated with people. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he when he began to explain Allah's message to the people around him, he spoke he called them my people. He didn't say you kafirs or you mushriks, or you this, that, and the other. No. Ya qawmi. This was the, this was the method that we used by all prophets. When these prophets were sent to their own societies, they would address the people around them by saying, O oh my folks, O oh my people, So when the Prophet, 
the last Prophet of Allah began his uh, preaching and teaching of Islam and the Quran, he was saying to them, Ya Qawmi. Um, at the beginning, he summoned them to a hill that he stood on and he said to them, he asked them, if I were to tell you that there is uh, an army behind this mountain on the verge of attacking you, would you believe me? And they say, Ma ahidna alayka illa sidq. We, we know nothing about you except that you are honest, trustworthy, reliable, and say nothing but the truth. So that's when he broke the news to them that he has been commissioned by Allah Azza wa Jal um, to deliver to them the divine message of Islam and Iman. From here on, there's a dynamic that took place. And that dynamic is... Um, some people just lightly dismissed it and some people just um, said, uh, well, let's see what's going to happen. And some people, the few uh, individuals in the first year became Muslims. They committed themselves to Allah and His Prophet. But then as the months and the years went by, uh, an animosity and a conflictarian personality, social personality, began to take shape. That's when the opponents of the Prophet began to show hostility towards the Prophet. These people now, because they distanced themselves from the Prophet with animosity, they gained the description kafirs, kuffar, kafirin. It took time of their opposition to the Prophet and their social behavior towards the Prophet for the ayat to be revealed to describe them for what they are. They were opposed to the Prophet in theory they were opposed to the, to the Prophet in everything, in all the truth that he presented them. So from here on, they became the Kafirin. Predominant among them was uh, some figures. Uh, what concerns us here is Abu Sufyan and Muawiyah. <clears throat> Abu Sufyan and Muawiyah, they, um, they fit the description of kafirin. This was not the case with the first Muslims who uh, followed Allah's Prophet. Abu Bakr, uh, Imam Ali, uh, as Zubair and others, uh, they, they did not show a conflictarian attitude towards Allah's Prophet. So the, you, you could never call them, uh, before they became Muslims, you could never call them kafirs. But what, what you have with Abu Sufyan and Muawiyah is a history of opposing Allah's Prophet. I will read some ayat here and not translate it word for word, but give you the gist of these ayat. وَمَا لَهُمْ أَلَّا يُعَذِّبَهُمُ اللَّهُ وَهُمْ يَصُدُّونَ عَنِ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ وَمَا كَانُوا أَوْلِيَاءَ Why would not Allah cause them Included among them is Abu Sufyan and Muawiyah. Why would he not cause them to suffer, to be punished, knowing that they are deflecting, 
that they are barring people from, meaning the Muslims, committed Muslims, from Al-Masjid Al-Haram. وَمَا كَانُوا أَوْلِيَاءَ And they never were, in the legitimate sense of the word, the maintainers of Al-Masjid Al-Haram. إِنْ أَوْلِيَاءُهُ إِلَّا الْمُتَّقُونَ The only awliya that Al-Masjid Al-Haram has are Al-Muttaqoon. وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ But most of them don't know this fact. وَمَا كَانَ صَلَاتُهُمْ عِنْدَ الْبَيْتِ إِلَّا مُكَاءً وَتَصْدِيًا فَذُوقُوا الْعَذَابَ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْفُرُونَ Their salah at the holy sanctuary was just a matter of making noise. So, you shall, you, these opponents to the Prophet, these enemies of the Prophet, you shall taste, experience, punishment and torment due to your kufr, due to the fact that you were active kafirs, بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْفُرُونَ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ لِيَصُدُّوا عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Indeed, those who spend their money to uh, derail from the course of Allah فَسَيُنْفِقُونَهَا ثُمَّ تَكُونُوا عَلَيْهِمْ حَسْرًا They will spend that money in opposition to Allah in, and His Prophet, but then they will regret it. ثُمَّ يُغْلَبُونَ And then they will be vanquished. They will be defeated. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يُحْشَرُونَ And those who our active kafirs are going to be corralled, are going to be assembled in the presence of their sustainer. Now, there's no names mentioned here. There's a description mentioned here that includes real human beings when these ayat were revealed. Who are these real human beings? Alladheena kafaru, that are mentioned in these ayat if it's whether they are uh, monopolizing Al Bayt Al Haram, taking full control, telling whoever they want to stay away, or whether they are spending money uh, as adversaries to Allah and His Prophet, who are they? This is not a time to list the full names of them, but among them were Abu Sufyan and Muawiyah. لِيَمِيزَ اللَّهُ الْخَبِيثَ مِنَ الطَّيِّبِ In this manner, Allah is going to make distinct. He is going to sift through and separate الْخَبِيثَ مِنَ الطَّيِّبِ Those who are uh, malevolent from those who are in a healthy sense uh, on Allah and His Prophet's side. وَيَجْعَلَ الْخَبِيثَ بَعْضَهُ عَلَى بَعْضٍ And there is, in this process, Allah is going to have those who have malice in them culminate one layer after another. فَيَرْكُمَهُ جَمِيعًا فَيَجْعَلَهُ فِي جَهَنَّمْ And then he's going to thrash all of them and place them in hell. أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ They are the ones who are going to lose. These ayat have been revealed concerning certain individuals who spent the thrust of their life 
as enemies of Allah and His Prophet. Of course, towards the end of their lives, they are going to become nominal Muslims. But these ayat are speaking about them before they became uh, Muslims for the camera, as it were. There are two ayat that speak about uh, these kafirin, included among them was Abu Sufyan and Muawiyah. قُلْ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Say, O Muhammad, to those who are actively in denial of Allah's power and authority. إِنْ يَنْتَهُوا يُغْفَرْ لَهُمْ If they cease what they are doing, they will be amnestied. يُغْفَرُ لَهُمْ مَا قَدْ سَلَفْ they will be amnestied for everything that they've done before. وَإِنْ يَعُودُوا فَقَدْ مَضَتْ سُنَّةُ الْأَوَّلِينَ And if they return to their objection, to their resistance, to their opposition, to their animosity, to their conflict ways, فَقَدْ مَضَتْ سُنَّةُ الْأَوَّلِينَ Let them know that the social law, the social law that had preceded them and destroyed many generations before them and many civilizations before them is equally applicable to them. This was said after this was said, meaning this ayah was revealed and recited after the battle of Badr. So Allah is giving these kafirs, He's giving them the chance. And please, when I use the word kafir, because it's been tossed around so much in the past 10 or 15 years, uh, don't think about its meaning the way it was utilized in the fake um, uh, battles and confrontations that were taking place, particularly in uh, uh, Syria and in Iraq. Now, Allah, in, per this ayah that was just stated, af, revealed after the battle of Badr, He was giving them the opportunity to repent. And if they do, okay, we'll forget and forgive, so to speak. Then, after the battle of Uhud, which what, there was an, a long stretch of time between Badr and Uhud, but listen to the ayah after the battle of Uhud. قُلْ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَتُغْلَبُونَ وَتُحْشَرُونَ إِلَى جَهَنَّمْ وَبِئْسَ الْمِهَادِ Say, meaning proclaim, O Muhammad, to those who are actively in opposition to Allah's power and authority. You will be defeated. ستغلبون وتحشرون And you will be gathered in hell إلى جهنم وبئس المهاد And how awful, how pitiful uh, a, pla a settling place to be in. Another, this, these ayat are speaking to real individuals. These real life figures who were prominent and by full force enemies to Allah and His Prophet. Remember, these ayat are speaking about them through, through the course of 20 years before they became Muslims. 
uh, another set of ayat in Allah la'ana al-kafirina wa lahum sa'ira indeed Allah has condemned these denier, deniers of Allah's power and authority and has prepared for them a blazing fire khalidina fiha abada within which they will be forever. لا يجدون وليا ولا نصيرا. There's no one there now uh, to become their uh, supporters or their promoters or their um, uh, people to help them in any way. يَوْمَ تُقَلَّبُ وُجُوهُهُمْ فِي النَّارِ This is speaking about real people. You, we can't, with a dash of a pen, we can't say that these ayat that are speaking to real enemies of Allah and His Prophet, because they verbally became Muslims 20 years after solid animosity to Allah and His Prophet, that... Oh, well, you know, these ayat don't mean very much. يَوْمَ تُقَلَّبُ وُجُوهُهُمْ فِي النَّارِ On a day when their, uh, their identities, their faces, their, um, their real selves uh, are going to be tossed to and fro in the fire. يَقُولُونَ يَا لَيْتَنَا أَطَعْنَ اللَّهَ وَأَطَعْنَ الرَّسُولَ They would say, they will say, Oh, how we wish, if only we obeyed Allah, and if only we obeyed the Messenger. وَقَالُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّا أَطَعْنَا سَادَتَنَا وَكُبَرَاءَنَا And they said, Oh, our sustainer, we obeyed our masters, our head honchos, our, high st uh, our people of high status in our societies, فَأَضَلُّونَ sabila, And they caused us to go off course. رَبَّنَا آتِهِمْ ضَعْفَيْنِ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ O Allah, provide them with multiple layers of torment وَالْعَنْهُمْ لَعْنًا كَبِيرًا and condemn them a very profound condemnation. These ayat that have been quoted are taking, taken from Surah Al-Anfal, Surah Ali Imran, and Surah Al-Ahzab. So let's, let's take now that we have a sense of how these ayat came down like thunderbolts to expose these deniers of Allah's power and authority. They weren't denying Allah His power and authority for a day or two, or a month or two, or a year or two. They were denying Allah's power and authority for two decades, for around 20 years. And then you, you, we come in, in today's world, we come and we have this argument uh, that says that uh, Abu Sufyan and Muawiyah, who were fighting and were intent on killing Allah's Prophet and the true Sahaba of Allah's Prophet for 20 years, and they did a lot of things uh, when Muawiyah and his clan, they did a lot of things when they gained power. There's one or two exceptions in that Umawi dynasty. Uh, but they come and say, oh, they're going to, they're, they are Sahaba and they are going to go to Al Jannah. They fought the Prophet for 20 years and then when they saw that they cannot win against Allah's Prophet and those who are with him, then they became Muslims. 
But then you have Abu Talib who defended Allah's Prophet for 10 years. They say, oh, well, he's going to, he's going to hell. And don't, don't get throw in this Sunni Shia stuff over here. Reference yourself with the ayat of the Qur'an. Understand what Allah is saying. And don't have some type of um, fabricated hadiths uh, that were made popular by those who stole, grabbed power and ruled illegitimately. illegitimately. Don't let them fool you. Uh, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, increase our knowledge of His guiding words and accept from us our devotion and our dedication so that we can see and understand the illegitimate rulers who are ruling today, their illegitimacy began with the Umawi dynasty that is akin to Bani Israel uh, in its self-centeredness. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.